Welcome to 144,000teachers.org, the first fruits unto God and to the land. We are looking in the menu at city, country, and as we look at the particular school that we have here, the school of the highest order, based on true education, we have now entered into a very special time which is the fall feast and today being the celebration of the feast of trumpet when we look at the agenda on the feast of trumpet we see that there is very very special time that we have consecrated in order to study the 7s the second coming as well as the spring and the fall feast we will give you an idea of what the spring and the fall feasts are all about by inviting you to the library of 144,000 teachers. For those of you who are very new at it, you will not want to miss this important study, which we have prepared here and specifically section 9A with the spring and the fall feast, where we are offering books, digital books, that is, and yet they are PDF format, so you can easily print them if you wish, or at least save them in your USB for future references. God Festivals, Spring Feast, Volume 1, A Must Read, and God Festival, Fall Feast, Volume 2, A Must Read. The other presentations here are basically the feast as well, having to do with the Spring Feast, and every fact connected. So these are researches that you may want to take time to study. Plus, we're introducing you to, again, the calendar movement, the biblical calendar, where we show you the feast from 2020 to 2030, as well as the sabbatical year and the jubilee year. We're going to look right now at the fall feast book, having to do with the Feast of Trumpets, which is the first feast of the fall. And we can read here a few paragraphs just to introduce you to this book, which is absolutely full of interesting references that you may never have heard before. The first reference to the Feast of the Trumpets is found in Leviticus chapter 23, verse 24. In the seventh month, on the first day of the month, which would be precisely today as this reading is on, you shall observe a day of solemn rest, a Shabbaton, a memorial proclamation with a blast of trumpet, a holy convocation, which is called Zikaron Teruha. The Hebrew phrase Zikaron Teruha can be literally translated a remembrance blast. The second major reference is found in Numbers chapter 29, verse 1. On the first day of the seventh month, you shall have a holy convocation. You shall do no laborious work. It is a day for you to blow the trumpets, the Yom Teruha. The Hebrew phrase Yom Teruha literally means a day of blowing. The crucial word in both references is Teruha, a series of staccato sounds on a wind instrument. Now we let you read here, this paragraph is very important. We will read it. The two passages offer little indications of the importance of the feast. The term Shabbaton, a day of solemn rest, is mentioned in the Bible in conjunction with the Sabbath, Exodus 16, verse 23. The day of atonement, Leviticus chapter 16, verse 3. And the feast of tabernacles, Leviticus chapter 23, verse 39. Thus, the term is commonly used for other festivals as well. Similarly, there was nothing unusual about the sacrifices prescribed for the first day of the seventh month, and as much similar rites were conducted on the other festival as well. But what was very interesting about the Feast of Trumpet, and is still to this day, the Feast of Trumpet introduced actually the other feast, the Fall Feast. And this is where this paragraph becomes very important, the blowing of the trumpets was understood to be a call to repent and prepare oneself to stand trial before God who would execute 
its judgment 10 days later on the Day of Atonement. So the importance of the feast is indicated by the fact that the Jews anticipated its arrival on the first day of each month, the new moon, through short blast of the shofar. So every month, starting with the first month, the month of Abib, or the month of the, the spring feast, Numbers chapter 10, verse 10, and Psalm chapter 81, verse 3 indicate that. These short blasts were an anticipation of the long alarm blast to be sounded on the new moon of the seventh month. So every new month, every new moon, which means the same in Hebrew, starting with the first month of the year, spring feast, all the way to the fall feast on the seventh month, there was a blowing of the trumpet. Except for six months, it was a short blast and the seventh month was a long alarm blast. So this is very, very significant as it introduces us today, the Feast of Trumpet as the first day, followed by 10 days all the way to the Day of Atonement. So this were called the Days of Repentance. So we may want to apply this in our life and practice it if it's the first time. For the next 10 days, let us repent and prepare to meet the judgment on the 10th day. This we are under the Great Day of Atonement since 1844. We believe according to the prophecy of Daniel chapter 8 verse 14 and Daniel chapter 9 verses 24 to 27 that these are very, very important time we're living in. And this is actually representative of the most holy place which the apostle and even the prophets in old time history would have loved to be living at this time. So these were details that we wanted to bring to you in order to prepare you for this particular day of trumpet and the days following until the Day of Atonement. And then there are five days between Atonement and Tabernacles. So we find it very, very important to remind you this because it is related directly to history and also it has a pattern in history that has been repeated. So we are now showing you another section that you will look at, which you may never have heard of for some of you, and it's the study of the Maseroth, Volume 1, Volume 2, and Volume 3. It sounds like a long study for the Day of Trumpet, but again, the Day of Trumpet is a Sabbath, not a seven-day Sabbath, but it's, a, it's kept as a Sabbath, and it's the first day of the Fall Feast. So we have a special program for this day as well, and you're going to see here the Volume 3, and then there is a last presentation where we bring you back to the fourth decree, Restoring the Creator's Worship, and this will be most interesting for you to look at as well, because it's directly related to the Feast the spring and the fall feast. So as we have taken you from the sanctuary to the festivals, we are now bringing you to volume one of the Maserat, just to give you an idea of what you are to expect. The Maserat is to declare the glory of God. The heavens declare the glory of God. New light in the Maserat. And in the Maserat, for those of you who do not know the significance, it's actually the great controversy in the stars. It's actually the creator's character vindicated at last. And we are teaching these one, those beautiful, important studies to children. So surely the adult can understand it as well. So prophesied in the Maserat is his work. And revealed in the sanctuary is his word. And this is what you will find out. So study carefully as this is presented. This is a fairly new study, and we are very, very pleased that these are opportunities that we have to present this to you. The Maserat is actually called in Greek or in Latin the Zodiac, but do not be afraid. This is astronomy, not astrology. This is actually the first book that was ever written in the sky, and it's divided actually in three books. And you will understand why as you continue to study. And it's interesting because it has three books, just like the sanctuary has three compartments. 
the court, the holy, and the most holy. So in it, the Heavenly Father is wanting to show both his works and his word. So as you continue to study, you will find out that the Heavenly Father had a big plan even before the foundation of the world, and he was prepared for sins to appear if man chose the wrong way. This was not anything to do with God per se. It was the fact that he didn't want to have people that are like robots and just answered because they're forced to do so. So he gave us the freedom of choice. And unhappily, the first man and the first woman chose wrong. And today we can still see the consequence of their choices. So we have here, again, the three books in the Mazabot, which are explained, and you will pursue this study because you will see that there are definitely some marvelous, marvelous discovery to make in the Mazabot that you may never have seen before. And it is explained hand in hand with the sanctuary because, again, it's describing the beautiful plan of salvation and all the prophecy that are fulfilled through the Mazabot. This is Maserat number one. So now we will show you another taste of it, which the Maserat number two. Volume two will bring you to the new light in the Maserat, the number and the names of the star. We know in the Bible, it says that he tell it the number of the stars and he give them all their names. Psalm 147 verse four. So as you study attentively the volume two of the Mazabot, you will be brought again to understand that nothing that the Heavenly Father writes has no value. You know, his word never return unto him void, but it always accomplished that which he has purpose. So you will learn much more here about the Mazabot, the cardinal constellation, the beautiful importance of those cardinal constellation, and what the Heavenly Father intends for us to learn from this first book. The Maserat was the first book ever given to the human race. And this you will learn here, the first book having to do with the beautiful, beautiful Betula and all the other constellations that are called cardinal constellation. And you will be introduced to their meaning. And so this is very important that you take time to peruse these wonderful studies. You have them in the library of 144,000 teachers, and it's under the Mazabot. And it has also the PDF as well as the video to give further explanation. So you will not want to miss this. So the second volume is basically introducing you to the cardinal constellation of the three books of the Mazabot where the third volume, we have taken time here to introduce you to a very beautiful prophecy that many people have never understood. And it's the prophecy of the book of Revelation, chapter 12, verse 1. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. And this is a mystery that is revealed through the beautiful, beautiful Mazaroth. You will discover that the Mazaroth itself means a garland of a crown or a garland of stars. So here we have a woman with a crown of 12 stars. So that will be interesting to follow through. And the part that the dragon plays in here in this chapter 12 of Revelation is also found to the Mazaroth as you study it carefully. And this will bring you further than the deacon constel the cardinal constellation. Now we're introducing you to the deacon constellation. So the garden of crowns or the garden of stars and the crown of stars. So this is what you will be discovering here. So we will be presenting you not only the cardinal now, but the deacon constellations and their meaning. So it's a lot of important studies. And we give you here the seven rules of correspondence on how to teach the, the Maserat or learn the Maserat, and then you can teach it as well. It's not as complicated as it seems, as long as you follow those seven rules that we have established from studying it 
And the first one being you need to tell the number of the 12 cardinal and 36 deacon constellation. You need to give the names of the 12 cardinal and 36 deacon constellation. You need to explain them. You need to ex demonstrate their structure, ascertain the timeline of the Mazara through the biblical calendar, connect the three books with the three compartments of the sanctuary, and teach the Mazara based on these rules of correspondence. So it's quite a lesson, and many people may not find interest into it, but we have, and we have done all the research for you, and put together, along with the Cardinal Constellation, the Deacon Constellation for each book. So you will want to be interested into this and looking at it very carefully. And we have a page here that we would like to expand on, and it's a very, very important page. And um, as we look closer, we believe we have increased um, the font here. We will increase it for you in order to see better. Uh, that's about as far as we can go. But this is a very important page. It's the wheel within the wheel. Again, this is the Maserat, which we have brought together. And what you will discover about the Maserat is when you put it into the biblical calendar schedule, you will find out that the Maserat starts with Virgo, contrary to where people started today. And you will find out that all of the parts, all the three books of the Maserat brings you to, first it brings you to the first coming, to the first and the second book. This is the first coming. So it will bring you from Virgo all the way here to the sign of Aris. And then you will see that it brings you all the way to the lamb that was slain and prepare the victory. So it starts with the desired child of all nations, the virgin, which has had a promised seed given to her. So that's the promised seed of the woman that is given is the desired child. And you will see that from the cardinal to the deacon constellation, it complement each other. So you cannot neglect them. You need to learn them both. Of course, we're not asking you to learn them by heart. The memorization is important, but in this case, you will have to spend a lot of time if you want to learn them. But the most important message is that they are, three books and the first and second book has to do with the first coming where the third book takes you to the second and third coming and this is real this is absolutely valuable and adam abraham all the people before moses they were studying the mazarot as the only book they had and then moses gave us the torah the first five book of the bible and then the prophet and the psalms so you may not want to miss this and pay attention. Also, it may sound kind of different that you have never heard such a thing before, but pay attention to it because it's full, full of treasures. And you will also discover these are the biblical month. So it starts with, we have given you here the Gregorian reckoning, January, February, and then the biblical month, which is the 11th month, which corresponds to January, February. And beautifully and interestingly enough, it will show you that it includes the spring feast of Passover, unleavened bread, and first fruits. It includes also the spring summer feast of Pentecost. So this is the barley harvest. This is the wheat harvest. And then it brings you all the way to the fall feast, which are the harvest of fruits and uh, the harvest of um, the vegetable. So you have trumpet, atonement, and tabernacle shown here. And you will see a wonderful, wonderful mystery of the Virgin, which starts around January, February, Gregorian reckoning, but the 11th month, biblical calendar. And it brings you all the way to the fall feast, where after nine months, she gives birth to Messiah. So you will not want to miss this very beautiful study. Then we carry you through to the fourth decree again, which you have seen during the precedent days. But this is a very important study as well as a reminder of the importance of the 70th Sabbath of Leviticus chapter 23 and Numbers chapter 28 and 29. And then introducing you to the feast, the spring and the fall feast. This was part of the evidence that we have demonstrated 
how the biblical calendar is all throughout the Bible and that it is very, very important for us to acknowledge not only the spring and the fall feast, but the 70th Sabbath is included in Leviticus chapter 23. It's actually the first holy convocation mentioned, and it's almost verbatim with Exodus chapter 20. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. So here you can see, you will go over it again, because specifically this day today is the Feast of Trumpets, and uh, it takes time to get accustomed to this if you have never, never seen the feast. So it's a perfect opportunity to study and prepare yourself, like we just saw, for the next 10 days, including today, to reach the Day of Atonement. And we are under the anti-typical Day of Atonement, where Christ started the judgment of the dead soon to pass to the living. And we know the sign to pass to the living will be the Sunday law in the United States declare afterward into an international decree. So first it starts with the national and then it goes into the international. So these are very, very important studies that we do not want you to neglect. And it brings you all the way, not only to the spring feast and the fall feast, but it brings you to the wonderful, wonderful study of the sabbatical year and the jubilee which we want to take time here to show you because this year, 21, 22, this is how you calculate it from a biblical, biblical approach. The feast always finishes with the Day of Atonement and Tabernacles, which is the Fall Feast, Trumpet, Atonement, Tabernacles. And the year, the civil calendar is calculated from Atonement to Atonement. And this is how, according to Leviticus 25, that you are supposed to calculate the sabbatical year and the jubilee year. And that represents the civil life of Israel. So you have a biblical calendar that represents the religious time, the feast. And then when the feast, the fall feast finished, then you're starting the part of this, not two calendar, but it's two parts in one calendar, where now you have the civil calendar. And the civil calendar is very important. We do not pay attention to it because we have never studied carefully Leviticus chapter 25, which has to do with the sabbatical year and the jubilee year, which we have presented in decree number four, which we encourage you, this is decree number four we are presenting here, and you will be studying this today. Again, to look at the importance of the feasts, including the seventh Sabbath, seventh Sabbath. Please don't ever cut off the seventh Sabbath. If you do not have the seventh Sabbath, you cannot establish the other feasts. So here we have some precedent to show you that are extremely important. And it has to do with the midst of the week of years. And people have neglected this as well. We have an example with the death of Christ, which we have seen in uh, the book of Daniel, chapter 8 and 9. Chapter 8 was representative of the 2300 days in chapter 9 is actually its explanation. And now the midst of the sabbatical year, we have to show you something very important because we have a midst of the sabbatical year, even this year. This year is the 21-22 sabbatical year, so a series of seven years. And it's also the midst of the Jubilee. The last Jubilee, which you will be studying in this particular uh, decree number four, which we have already presented this week, but you will want to revise it often. The last Jubilee was 1994. And how do we know that? Is because we have calculated historically from Shinesharib and all of the scripture that we have demonstrated already. And we brought you to the Jubilee here of the sabbatical year of from Shinesharib in the Old Testament all the way to 2043. So from 702 BC, and we show you exactly how to calculate it so you will not be left without understanding. And we carry you through all the way from 702 BC and all the way to 1888, and we go to 1844 as well. And we bring you all the way to the Second World War, which, by the way, when it finished in 1945, you will discover it was a Jubilee year. Then the next one that we bring you to that um, 
we're showing you here, it's 1994, that was the next jubilee. It's not complicated actually, because it's a series of 49 years. And the 50th year is the first year of the next group of seven years of sabbatical year, just like Pentecost. So if you neglect Pentecost, you will never understand this. So you've got to study. This is new light. The Maserat is new light, this is new light. And for people who love new light, you will appreciate it. And keep in mind, this study was done in 2020. So that's why we show here these particular dates. But now we're 2022 and people say, well, you could do a sequel of it, which is true. But now you have the rules of correspondence. So maybe you can do the rest. But we have given you all the information that are necessary. And we just want to stop here for this particular data. These particular data are very, very important because they do bring you to 2043, demonstrating without a shadow of a doubt that from the fall of 2021 to the fall of 2022, we are just finishing a sabbatical year. And this particular 2021-2022 is the midst of the Jubilee year between 1994 to the next Jubilee year of 2043, which we're educating here. So please pay attention. For us, it has major, major importance. Hopefully it will become important for you too. And again, we have showed you that it is a start with 702 BC where we have been able to establish these Jubilee years, which brings us to 457 BC, which you know that date was very important. It was a Jubilee year. AD 34, which was the end of the seventh year, or the one week of Daniel chapter 9. And now 1798 was another Jubilee year, which you know was very important because it represented the, the end of the first papal supremacy. And then we have an important date here, 1847, which is another Jubilee year, which precede the, uh, which finishes again the midst of the week of 1844. And then we have here the closer to us, the 1994 Jubilee, which we carry you to all the way when you go back to those files we just showed you to finally arrive in 2043. But please take heart. The Lord promised that he will cut the time short of righteous and righteousness for the sake of the elect. So don't expect that we have another 20 years because we're showing you 2043 as the next Jubilee year. No. We believe that we could hasten the coming of the Lord and we could also bring all this wonderful teaching to this world if we are sincere and true. And do not forget, this is basically a blessing and a curse. The more knowledge we have, the more we owe it to the world to find out. We cannot hide our light under a bushel. And this is our responsibility. So as you hear these things, you still have a choice. You can accept or reject, but make sure that you will also have to live with the consequences. So we pray at the closing of this particular presentation right now that on this day of trumpet, that you will make a commitment, a new commitment to submit your will and your life to Christ so that he can use you as his instrument to present these important messages, this new light to a dying world. And the blessing is obey and live. But if we disobey, we have a curse against us. And this is to die. And people may not believe it, but salvation was not finished at the cross. It was not. We know it has been taught, but it's wrong. Salvation continues into the holy place and into the most holy place. And we are not saved forever meaning that one save, always save, does not exist. Every day, we continue to work towards the most holy place and to work toward to have the work of the Lord done in us. We don't do that work. We let the Lord do that in the most holy place for us, but we have a part to do. And please make sure to pass this wonderful message to as many people as you can as you return home. And if you do not remember, hey, that's easy. Teachers do not learn all this. Teachers use references and it has even more value because then it's not your word. It's not your opinion. It is a thus said the Lord. So may the Lord bless you. 
on this wonderful Feast of Trumpets. And we have much more to say, but you need to study in order to grow into this knowledge. And do not get discouraged because we have, we have been promised in the pen of inspiration that at a time of the end, people will unlearn really, really fast and learn very, very fast. May the Lord bless you and cause his face to shine upon you and give you peace always. And don't forget, you're entering the fall feast today.